All right, hey there. Welcome to week number nine of the American Defense Manufacturing Intro to Three Gun video series. All right, last week we did live fire and dry fire for the handgun. This week is live fire and dry fire for the shotgun. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so before we get started with dry fire and live fire, let's go over a couple things. First, safety. Because we're doing dry fire rolling directly in the live fire, make sure you have your eyes and ears whenever you're out doing practice on the range. Okay, um, ammo. So for shotgun ammo, it is getting harder and harder and uh, very difficult to find dummy rounds for you to practice quad loading and shotgun drills with for dry fire, right? Um, you have to be extremely cautious because most people are having to use real ammo when they're doing dry fire. We do not recommend this. Find somebody, search somebody out that can make you some dummy rounds or something in order to practice with. Um, I know a couple guys, at least two people that have blown out windows because they were loading and practicing with their dry fire, dry fire with live ammo and blew out their windows by accident. Accident, negligence, whatever you want to call it, it's not safe to practice dry firing with live ammunition, not to practice the quad loading or anything else find dummy rounds we can't stress it enough um if we ever find a way to get some or have a constant supply of them we'll offer them on the website at stage zero shooting.com all right but in the meantime do what you can to find them we'll do everything we can to help you find them all right so uh eyes ears don't use any live ammunition for dry fire uh, a couple other things we're going to get into some of the targets we're going to use right so the targets that we're going to use for this we're going to use the same half size ipstick that we would use for our pistol drills that we used last week uh, the half-size zip six steel targets from MGM Targets, but we're also going to use the MGM knockover stands and knockover plates. Um, nice thing about those, you buy those in a pack of six for the stands, uh, come in three at 18 inches and I think three at 24 inches long, and then um, you can buy the plates individually, anything from a four inch up to a 12 inch. Um, I like to use the four inches um, and the five inch ones a little bit more often than not. Uh, makes me slow down, get my hits, so that when I'm in a match and I have something that's a larger target, 8, 10, 12, I can speed up a little bit more. Um, another little uh, mention for when you do live fire. So anytime I practice with live fire for shotgun, I always use a mod choke. No matter what it is, I use a mod choke um, that makes me slow down, get the hits, especially on the longer transitions and stuff like that, uh, especially on the shorter stuff as well. Um, if you've ever shot and you have... Uh, you're on a stage where you've got a long range piece of steel or something and you need a tighter choke and then you have a clay at five yards a lot of people have a tendency to miss that clay at five yards because their pattern is so tight all right so i always use that type that tighter pattern when i'm practicing so that it helps me slow down get the hits and then when i'm at a match and i'm using a more open choke like the briley diffuser or a briley ic uh then i've got a little bit more room for margin for error so I practice with a mod, slow down, get the hits, speed up with that. If I can do it and consistently get my hits, get my pattern on the target that I need, then I can do the same in the match, especially if I'm opening, it, opening up the choke to a diffuser or IC or something that's got more, uh, that's what I'm looking for, that's got more forgiveness than a mod does, all right? So that's uh, just a couple little tips that I, uh, for actually conducting live fire. And a couple things to remember for dry fire. And let's get uh, right into it. Same as last week, we're going to do the drill and then we're going to immediately uh, put it into a uh, practical application on the range with live fire. All right, so let's get started. All right, so first things first, um, my shotgun that I'm using, I've got the Benelli M2 here. This is tricked out. This is the uh, Dissident Arms DA-12, all right? This is the, uh, the Elite Series. It's tricked out with all the Bradley Go Fast goodies, the handguard, the Plus 8 Carbon Fiber Mag 2, Bradley Chokes. I've got the mod in since I'm doing practice. Um, oversized bolt release, oversized charging handle, the Terran Tactical AccuLift Lifter, the Bradley Oversized Safety, ANS Trigger Guard, Bradley Trigger, um, left side charging. So if you notice, my charging handle is on the left hand side. Um, I love this. This is a great feature. Um, we'll get more into that when we do the full review of the, the Dissident Arms shotgun here. All right, so a couple things first. Um, we're going to talk about right hand, uh, strong hand loading and weak hand loading. Whether you're, all that is is just which hand you load with, right? So most people assume when you say strong hand loading that they're loading with their right hand. When you say weak hand, you assume they're left. And that's because uh, 
it's your dominant hand. Your dominant hand is what dictates strong, strong or weak. So if you are left-handed and you're loading weak hand, that means you're loading with your right hand. And if you're loading strong hand, loading strong hand, that means you're loading with your left. So um, some caddies are set up for grabbing the shells with your right hand or grabbing the shells with your left hand. Um, the nice thing, I use the Invictus Practical Caddies. These are the 2.8s. I use the Rack 12 and I use the uh, the 2.8 uh, Q as well. Um, but the nice thing about these is that the way these come is you can set them up whichever way you want. You can set them up for right-handed or left-handed. Um, it doesn't matter. You don't accidentally order the wrong one or grab the wrong one or whatever. Um, I do a lot of practicing both strong hand and weak hand on my reloading because I think there's an application for each throughout a match. Uh, you just have to be able to get your mind to switch off from strong hand loading to weak hand loading, which uh, most of the time I do, but occasionally if you see my match video, you'll see me pull up to go strong hand and then I'll change it and pull it back in to go weak hand because uh, I'm out of shells on this side and I meant to load left hand um, or weak hand. So um, we're going to get right into it. A couple little things uh, for uh, the first drill is just loading. So we're going to go over quad loading. Not a lot of people do dual loads anymore. Um, but if you do, it's the same concept as the quad load. You're just loading two at time instead of four. So again, this isn't how-to videos. Uh, we're just going to get straight into um, the drill itself. I'll give you a couple little hints as we do the drill so that uh, it'll hopefully help you there. All right, so I've got my timer, right? My Competition Electronics Pocket Pro 2. Um, and I'm going to start off with weak hand or strong hand. So the way that I do it, is let me get my start time i'm gonna set a par for loading four rounds for two and a half seconds all right uh and we'll do three seconds we're gonna be a little bit generous because i have not been practicing my reloading at all and this is probably gonna look like a monkey hump in a football all right so make sure that it's loose there i've got no um ammo in so I'm just gonna load and get the gun back into position. I'm not trying to chamber around or anything like that. First round I'm gonna do is, is strong hand. I'm gonna start from the position here because that's usually where you're gonna be loading from. Um, but when I turn it in, one of the things I'm looking to do is I'm looking to pin the stock between my um, shoulder and my chin, and I'm looking down and eyeing the, uh, the loading port here. That way I can watch the, the, the load go all the way in. So. All right. Try that again. All right. So do that. I'm going to do the same thing left hand, uh, weak hand. So for weak hand, when I'm up, I've got my finger on the trigger. I'm going to roll it under, pin it between my, my uh, stomach, my side, and my arm. Again, I'm going to look as I grab and load in each round, all right? Does you no good to keep looking up here and miss the load and drop shells on the ground, fumble them in your hand, and then you walk past your target, have to stop and recorrect uh, your load while standing flat-footed or potentially run out of ammo because half of your ammo is on the ground, all right? So always watch that loading port as you're doing it. All right, so that's just a couple drills, do that. Um, I had it set for three seconds. You saw on the strong hand, I did it probably about two and a half. Um, I wasn't loading very fast, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, I haven't been practicing, so I've got a lot of work to do myself, a lot of draw fire practice to put in. But um, two and a half seconds, start with a three second, three and a half second. Get that four, that load four in, get it in consistently, and then bump yourself down to 2.8, then two, two and a half, and then, you know, 2.3, 2.2. Bring it down until you get it to your going as fast as you can, consistently getting loads, consistent grabs uh, for each load. All right. So uh, go ahead. We're going to do this and we're going to do a, a actual drill with it where I'm going to load four, shoot one, and then start the drill over. All right. So I'm going to do the, the drill. I'm just going to do one strong hand, one weak hand where I load and I'm going to shoot the half size in stick down there at the end. I'll just get the pellets on. Uh, just for the, the sake of getting the repetitions in behind the gun as well. All right, so um, what I am going to do, because I'm going to go ahead and load one into the chamber because this is practice, um, and that's what I'm going to be going from. I've got a different drill that I'll use when I'm doing a dry start finish or a dry reload. All right, 
So here we go. All right, I got some pellets on there. It's hard to see from back there, but we've got some amp ammo in there. That was a three flat from uh, to sh from a <laughs> from a buzzer to shot fired. All right, two point seven four. So again, do that, just practice that one round. You don't have to do a whole bunch of rounds. It doesn't have to be a high round count drill. Now, if you wanna do that and say, shoot at MGM targets plate rack and do one, two, three, and then reload one, two, three, or one, two, reload four, one, two, reload one, two, one, two, three, four, um, you can do so. So we'll get into that a little bit more here in just a second. All right, so now we're gonna put that drill into a uh, practical ap application. I'm going to start with one round already chambered all right as if i'm up on the gun and i'm trying to do my reload in the middle of a stage i'm going to do one set strong hand and then i'm going to do one weak hand all right i've got the timer um i've got it set to no par time uh just uh engage the target so we can see what my time is all right so here we go All right, 2.81 for that load. Now we're gonna do what we can. All right. Oh, messed that up. Uh, I'd put the gun back on safety from the one before, uh, which is not a bad habit to have, but uh, caused me to mess up. 4.47 on that one. All right, now we're going to do another one. Um, continuation of this drill that if you have access to like an MGM Targets plate rack, this is a great drill to run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot two on the plate rack. I'm going to reload strong hand, shoot two on the uh, plate rack, the two middle plates, and then reload left uh, weak hand, and then shoot the last two. So it gives me um, both drills. I get to pull it in, load strong hand, get the gun back out on position, hit targets, manage to recoil, pull back in, reload, we can, back on target, manage to recoil for the two shots. So it gets a lot more fundamentals in um, for the drill for six rounds, all right? All right, 8.08 .08 to do that. Like I said, eight seconds, um, and that gave me two reloads, two getting the gun back on target, and three shots of managing the recoil, or three getting the gun back up on target. Um, so that's a lot of, a lot of stuff to put into a low round count drill. Um, again, the MGM targets plate rack is a great way to, to, um, to utilize that drill and to do that. Uh, let's get on to the next drill. All right, so the next drill we're going to do is uh, very often overlooked, okay? And that's usually utilizing your match saver. Um, it's a very simple thing that can cost people a lot of time. I've seen people throw it out. I've myself have thrown it out, thrown it past the uh, loading port onto the ground. I've gotten it to where it's not far enough into the loading port and it's still angled out. And when I slam the bolt closed, it throws the round out in front of me. Um, and again, you're just standing there, bolt closed. Now you're having to reload. Uh, rechamber the round get the gun back up it takes a lot more time a lot more time something that should cost you uh four tenths to half a second to do if not faster than that um now turns into a four to five second standing flat footed reloading ammo uh to take down one last target or whatever so um we're going to practice that for dry fire the the chamber will have to be locked back because you're not going to get the recoil in order to go dry to chamber it like you will in the drill we're going to do here in a second so um, I've got right here, like I said, I've got the Bradley handguard with the Bradley, uh, um, stage saver on it. So all I'm going to do is when I'm out shooting, I'm just going to sweep back, push it with that front finger, use the rest to got it in, keep it level and sweep it all the way back and in and drop it in. And then once I drop it in, I'm closing the bolt and I'm ready to fire. All right. So we're going to do that a couple times um again set your your part time on your timer i'm gonna set my part time we'll set it to 
uh, we'll give myself seven tenths. All right, let's see if I can not jack this up too bad. All right, so shot fired. So that got it, got it loaded in seven tenths and my, my hand back out into support on the gun for the next, next round. So we'll do that one more time. All right, and then we'll go live fire with it. Well, see, sometimes you close it, you don't get it in there. So let's try it one more time, all right? Remember, don't put your finger on the trigger for this drill. Um, reason being is because unless you've got a dummy round, you're gonna blow a hole in something, all right? Your wall, your door, through a wall, injure somebody in your household or, or somebody, a neighbor or something. So make sure that uh, if you do this drill and if you do it using live fire or using live ammo, <coughs> do it in as safe a place as possible as you can get it. Again, we don't recommend using live ammo. Find a dummy round, <laughs> just find a dummy round, all right? Um, but if, if you decide to use live ammo, don't put your finger on the trigger. Put the gun on safe. Don't take it on and off safe as part of the process. Leave it on safe. The whole time I was on doing that, I was using my safety was engaged so that if I did mess up, if I did have a mental lapse of judgment and do something incredibly stupid and pull the trigger during dry fire with live, fire, with live ammo in my gun, I'm not... Uh, injuring somebody or, or destroying something or, or even worse. All right, so um, now we're gonna get into actual live fire drill. All right, now let's talk the same drill and live fire. So the same drill and live fire, I'm gonna use two rounds for this drill. I'm gonna have one already in the chamber so that I can uh, engage the target. I'll have two targets up. Right now I've got two plates up on my MGM targets plate rack. Got two targets up, I'll shoot one. I'll match save into the other and shoot the second. All right, now let me take the part-time back down because I don't need a part-time on this. Just see what my time is. And that'll give me a shot to shot. I'll see, be able to see what my true time is. All right, so here we go. All right, so 1.89 total, 1.64. Incredibly slow time for that match save. So let's see if I can speed that up, do it a little bit better. All right. All right, 1.39 that time. 1.16, so I took half a second off there. Oh. Again, 2.36, I messed up there. That's why we practice, that's why we do dry fire. So make sure you dry fire, get used to that. Um, utilize it in practice, run dry, match save, just so you can do that um, and get that experience in during practice. All right, so let's move on to the next drill. All right, the next dry fire drill we're gonna talk about is another way to load when you go dry. So if you're in the middle of a stage and you've already match saved, right? Um, You've already match saved, put one in, whether it was to engage one target, and then you had to drop over to reload, um, or whether you put it in to, uh, to engage one target, and now you're back to reloading because you're back to dry lock. Um, there's another way to do it. Um, usually, I try and save my match saver for the end of the stage, so that just in case everything goes crazy, if I'm standing flat footed and I've got one target I need to engage, I can match save and get that with the least amount of time possible. Anything else, if it happens during the stage, I have the ability to make up that time because I should be able to load while I'm moving. Um, so if I go dry lock in the middle of a stage, there's another way to um, reload. I do this from the strong hand. I don't practice it weak hand, uh, to be honest with you. I'll never even try to practice it weak hand for me. Um, so I do it strong hand. But if I go dry, I'll pull the gun in, pinch it like I'm supposed to, drop around in, close it, and then load all right it's a little bit time consuming i've seen people do this incredibly fast um jenna reeves nikki woodall are, are two they used to practice this all the time and it showed because they could drop that in as fast as i could drop in a quad load or you know a single quad load let alone eight 
Um, but it's a great thing to practice and everything like that, but it does take practice. So um, I'm gonna run through that just a couple times, uh, or just one more time, seeing, seeing, you've seen what it takes. It's grabbing the four, dropping the first one, closing the bolt, and then loading that one, and then two more, all right? So we'll do it again real quick. I'm not even gonna worry about a timer because I suck at this pretty bad, but it's a, it's a very useful drill that you can apply in practice and in dry fire that will pay you dividends in the middle of a match if you go dry, all right? So, I'm up, take it. Let's do this again, because my hands did not want to cooperate <laughs> while we dry fire, all right? Uh -huh. Back up. All right, you know what? Let me see how this would look doing, doing weak hands all right if i rode it here now there's no way to do that i'd have to load it all the way over grab drop back over and load it so it takes a little bit more manipulation to do it with your weak hand um but it can be done and of course the only way to get better and to become efficient and proficient at it is to practice so all right now let's put this into practical application i'm gonna run it on the timer we'll see how truly bad i am at this um and you'll see that you can do this just as fast as I can with minimal practice. Um, all right, here we go. Come on. 6.74. That was beyond horrendous. Um, I'm not getting good, a good drop in that first one. All right. One more time, see if I can do it faster. Like I said, I've seen people do this same exact thing in two and a half, three seconds. I'm that just, just that bad because I've not actually practiced it in years. Um, wish I had because it'll help me many times during matches, had I been practicing it. And I lost around 5.55. So don't be like me practice get your drive fire in it'll help you i promise you won't look like a jack wagon like i am right now all right so just another drill to help you uh get that round loaded and get the gun back up into action in the middle of the stage uh hopefully that drill helps you and hopefully you practice it way more than i obviously have all right now we'll go to the next drill all right so the next drill that we're going to talk about is uh to help you with an empty start. So we're gonna start with a empty chamber, bolt closed, you're gonna load four, chamber around, get the gun up and engage the target, all right? There's another variation to this that I'll show you in the live fire portion, but for now, just for the, uh, the dry fire, I'll show you this. So again, dry fire, use dummy shells, try and stay away from the live fire, am live ammunition as much as possible, if not completely, find some dummy shells, all right? Um, that being said, so there's a couple different ways to load your shotgun. Um, I'm gonna take this out and put it back over to the right hand side. So most people have charging hand on the right hand side. So what you're gonna do when you get the gun over and load, I've seen a couple ways that people do this. I've seen them load and come back and use the fingers to grab hold of the, the charging handle and use that thumb to hit down on their, their shell latch release, all right? So they'll push that and pull back at the same time. And then when you've got a round in the chamber, the bolt's gonna close back onto that chamber, onto that round, chambering it, and then you can drive the gun back up, all right? So uh, we're going to set the timer. I'm gonna set a part time of the load four end chamber I'm gonna set three and a half seconds. Like I said, I'm, I'm being generous. I haven't been practicing a lot. All right, gun back up. I was a little slow there, but round in the chamber. All right, I don't normally practice it this way because it's not how I do it myself anymore, um, but we'll do it one more time there. all these out all right back to dry now let's get into the live fire all right
right, now let's do it uh, live fire real quick. We'll shoot at the half size Ip Ipsic target down there. All right, let's take the part time off so that we've got the, just the timer telling me how bad I'm, uh, I am. All right, here we go. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Used to that being on the other side. All right. 4.65 there. Not very good. Not very fast. But uh, it is what it is. Um, do it one more time. <laughs> See if I can do it this way this time. All right. Three point six four. Um, so you can see that's a a bit faster than doing it. Of course, I had to grab for this on this side and had to work around the other way. So that's strong hand. How to how to do that? How to get the uh, a drill that dry fire drill and putting it into a live fire application for uh, an empty chamber start. Now that's strong hand, but then you've got weak hand. So let's do the weak hand real quick. All right, so this drill that I'm gonna do is taking what we just talked about with um, the empty start uh, or the, the closed bolt, empty chamber start, um, and it adds that. So what I do is I've got two boxes up here. You don't need boxes, you can use sticks, you can use rocks. I set them about six feet apart and I'll shoot the, do the timer. I've got uh, MGM target set up on left-hand side of the bay and the right-hand side. And so what I'll do because I'll start with the timer. Timer will go off. I'll load, chamber the round, get the gun up. One target, two target. As I'm moving, I'll work on eyeing that and seeing the reload, like we talked about earlier. Get the gun back up. One target, two target. All right. So I've got some clays out there too. So I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to do it once strong hand and once we can, so you can see the difference. Um, I pretty much only start with a strong hand reload or a strong hand uh, empty chamber start. So that's how I'm gonna do it. So the first one will be strong hand, strong hand for the reload and everything. And then the second one will be strong hand um, start and then weak hand on the reload. Uh, and the second run, I'll do the clays. All right, so do this real quick. Bolt close. All right. Here we go. This time I'm just doing the MGM knockovers targets. Two on this side, two on that side. All right. So I got some pellets on the one on the on the first target over here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. I got some pellets, but not enough to take it down. Uh, again, I'm using a mod choke. That tells me that I need to slow down, get my hits, uh, and then transition over. But my transitions were good to the other side. And like we talked about with the pistol videos, use your timer to see where you can gain speed. So I can look at that first run and go, okay, it was three and a half seconds for me to load four, chamber around and get the gun up to the first shot. I had a 0.68 on the transition. And then uh, 2.91 on the reload, moving into position to the next shot with a 0.62 transition. Now these are longer transitions. Um, so I can look at all that feedback and see that I need to speed up my initial load, my second load. I've got a lot of time that I can save there. I normally get that second load in about 2.1, 2.2, somewhere in there. My initial load is normally for me about a two and three quarter. So I'm slow all the way across the board. I've done that drill usually in, um, I've usually done that drill in uh, 6 point, 6.7 to 6.8. It's been the fastest that I've ran it consistently. A um, little bit slower, 7.72. So I got about another second I can take off. And that's a half second on both loads. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to uh, load strong hand. And I've got three clays on this side. And then I'm going to uh, load weak hand moving into position. And I've got three clays up on this side. All right. So work the transitions, work the movement, work the reloads. All right, get these. Empty chamber start. Wait. Whoop, oh, see? All right, had to make up that one. You can see what I was talking about earlier though, making sure that your mind's in for what you're doing. 
I've practiced with the strong hand, strong hand, and that's what I went to for my reload, whereas I meant to go weak hand. So uh, it's actually a great thing to help uh, sharpen your mental tools for uh, stage planning and everything like that. Uh, so hopefully those drills help you. Um, let's get to it. All right, so one, uh, one last drill, one last little thing you can work on. Um, transition, shotgun transition, just like pistol and rifle or whatever, you can save a lot of time with your transitions. Um, swinging the gun into position, you can overdrive the target, miss, have to take the makeup shot, uh, potentially run dry, have to reload, then take the makeup shot. So uh, being able to, to pull up quick transitions, get the gun on target, pull the trigger at the right time um, is important. So you wanna practice transitions. It does not have to be from here to over here. Um, even going fast and managing the recoil, like on a plate rack, one, two, three, four, five, six, you see Jerry and Lena Mitchell doing drills and it's like, holy crap, how do they get those targets down on the plate rack that fast? How, like, you just don't understand how they're working the trigger that quick or whatever. But the fact is they put the time in on the range um, and you can do the same thing. It's hard to, to uh, you can't recreate the, uh, the recoil management aspect of transitions and shooting fast through targets in dry fire, but you can practice the movement of the, the gun. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. And you don't have to have any ammo or use anything to do that. Now I'm a big believer that when I'm doing a drill, I like to load. I like to input the load. I like to, whether it's doing a, um, uh, a, a in, bolt close empty chamber start, whether it's just loading for getting the gun back up into position, whether it's going from a dry lock and using the, uh, the stage saver or whether it's doing like I showed you with grabbing four, dropping one in and then loading the other three. Um, I always like to add those into my dry fire practice or my range exercises because you can never get enough practice on those things. Um, but for the sake of this transition, we're just going to go um, target to target. You know, you pick two spots on the wall, two spots on the range, whatever the case may be, and just going from there. And it's just having the gun up in position and then driving the gun over. And again, letting your eyes move and the gun following over, all right? So you've got it there. Whether it's moving along in a linear pattern, so I'm going here, one, two, and I'm pulling the trigger. I'm breaking the trigger when I'm doing it, just so I'm, I know that I've got that, that good sight picture and everything, that I've got the gun up on target, but I haven't pulled the, the trigger to break the shot after I've driven past the, the target, all right? So I'm going here, boom, boom, boom 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 and moving it through all right um i've got a couple of live fire drills that I'll, I'll show you in regards to the transitions and breaking the shot at the right time one i picked up from patrick kelly a couple years ago which i haven't done in a while um and it'll probably show but i used to love this drill and it helped me a lot with my transitions um so let's get to a couple of the live fire drills uh because there's only so much you can really practice with the transitions in um so many different ways to practice transitions in dry fire. All right, so just went over that just a little bit with you. Like I said, throw in a load with it, get the gun up, transition between targets in, in dry fire. In live fire, uh, here's how I do it for live fire. All right, so um, I'm gonna show you the drill from Pat Kelly real quick. Uh, like I said, it goes from side to side. You're working the outside to outside to in, in, in. So um, what you're doing is you're starting on the outside plate, coming off the plate rack, as you come back across, you're hitting the, the outside right, coming off the plate rack, hitting the second one on the, the left, back off the plate rack. So you're just working on swinging transitions and breaking that shot as the uh, the target comes into your, your uh, line of sight. All right, so I like to practice, like I said, uh, doing drills with uh, adding the load in there to it because I think you can't practice that enough. So I'm gonna start off with a weak hand um, load and then uh, go from there. So here we go. So it took me two extra shots, you can see there, um, but you get the, the gist of it. It's just working on getting that, that transition, breaking that shot when you come in line with the target. Um, the plate rack is a great way to do it because you can stand here, you can take the, the cord and pull it, and you're good to go. 
um, and reset it and you don't, it doesn't require a lot of movement. Now, another thing that I'll use for drill, um, for the, for transition drills is I'll use the MGM, the half size zipstick target that you can see over here. And, uh, right now, because it's behind one of my walls, I'm going to use the MLS target over here. So the same thing I'm going to load for, and then, uh, I'm going to start at one transition to the other and then transition back. And then I'll load for transition on this one or start on this one, transition over and then transition back. So three rounds and it picks me up two transitions. Plus I get to reload for the practice in. All right, so let's do that. Start here, go here, back. All right. Ah, I was a little right on that one. Didn't get that second shot in. All right. Now I've got uh, one round in the chamber, so I don't have to do the empty start this time. I'm just going to load four and get right to it. I'm going to start on the right, go left, and then back to the right. All right. Again, look at your, your time. See what your transitions are. My transitions that time were uh, 0.68 from left to right, and then 0.69 from right back to left. All right. So here we go. Alright, 4.27 there, I didn't have to chamber, so 0.61 on that transition from right to left, and then I was a 0.75 coming back, so I was slow on that transition coming back over to the right. Um, again, that's just a couple, couple more drills that I like to run, things that have helped me over the years, especially when I was actually practicing a lot. Um, as I try and get back into it, getting ready for USPSA Multigun Nationals, for uh, Christian Arms Battle for the South by Zoo City, for the American Defense Manufacturing uh, Tar Heel Challenge. As I start to gear up for those, I'm going to start putting a lot more of this into practice, both dry fire and live fire. Hopefully you do the same. Hopefully it helps you. We appreciate you tuning in for week number nine. Be sure to go and register at TarHill3G.com, um, the link below, for uh, your chance to win an Invictus Practical Rack 12, 12-round 12 caddy, um, and, or, or for your chance to win a set of dissident arms chokes for your shotgun, three chokes from the guys at dissident arms. We appreciate you. Thank you. We'll see you next week.